So I uh, gave up smoking for a new year, but uh, it's not New Year anymore, is it? Actually, I thought about giving up smoking, but I decided not to because I'm not a quitter. I start something, I stick with it. See it out to the end. I mean, I know every cigarette I smoke takes five minutes off my life, but I also know it takes ten minutes to smoke it. <laughs> That's a clear five-minute net gain, I reckon. And they say it's very bad for your lungs, smoking. And it is, it's very bad for your lungs, but, uh, you know, it's just your lungs, for God's sake. People are trying to make you give up, though. And the things that people use to try and make you give up, like in Canada, the health warnings on the packets, there's not just words. It doesn't just say, smoking kills, or stop smoking, you eat it. It actually has photographs on the packs of the things cigarettes do to your body. They've got, like, pictures of autopsied brains that have had strokes and autopsied lungs with tumours in them. And the idea is to make you go, oh, that's horrible, I'm not going near them. But in fairness, if they had a photograph of a perfectly healthy autopsied lung, you'd still go, oh, that's horrible, I'm not going near them. I mean, if all Bran had a picture on the box of a really healthy autopsied bowel going, this is how clean your guts will look if you eat this stuff, they wouldn't sell box one, would they? People don't like photographs of autopsied organs on the boxes of their consumer goods. It's as simple as that. The idea, obviously, is to make you go, well, that's what cigarettes do to you, maybe I'll give up. But if you're like me, and you see smoking cigarettes as your only hobby, it just makes you want to collect the whole set. I've got the lung cancer one. Has anyone got the stroke one? That's the one I'm looking for. I'll tell you what, I've got two uh, bleeding gums. I'll swap you bleeding gums for a stroke. Come on. Obviously, I'm not looking forward to the smoking ban. That'll, that'll do me in a bit. I was up in Scotland when they brought in the smoking ban there, and I wasn't even thinking. I was in a bar, and so I went to light up a cigarette. Because I was in a bar. The barman was like, ah, you can't smoke that in here. You have to take it outside. That's the law. I'm like, fair enough. And I'm on my way out. He goes, ah, but you can't take your beer outside. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. you're just trying to annoy me now, aren't you? I did, I had to leave my beer just inside the door and just stand outside and just look at me beer as I'm smoking me fag. And I can feel the beer looking back at me. You know, it's like me, the beer, the fag. We all knew in our hearts we belonged together. I'm trying to separate cigarettes and alcohol. That's against God's will. I'm nothing against non-smokers, though, or even anti-smokers. They're, they're fine with me. The people I hate are occasional smokers. You know the sort? It's like, oh, I only smoke when I'm drinking. I only smoke when I'm really nervous. I only smoke your fags, never buy the bleeding things for myself. I hate these people. Because I don't begrudge giving somebody a cigarette. Get them started on the habit, eventually they get hooked, buy a fag, give you one back one day. It's almost an investment. But it doesn't work like that with these people. Because you give them a fag, and then they don't even smoke the bleeding thing. They take it off you, and they do this. And you're like, smoke it. Smoke it. I'm going to stick it in your neck in a minute. The smoke's going in your lungs one way or another. You decide. This is the cigarette you bought with your hard-earned money and gave them out of the goodness of your admittedly quite weak heart and they just wasted it in front of your eyes. Can you imagine how you'd feel if you were to buy somebody a beer and they were to go, cheers, thanks very much. We really don't know if that joke's worth the amount of beer that's wasted in telling it. <laughs>